In this lesson, we're considering whether the similarity of figures is something that goes both ways, and here's what I mean by that. We know that if figures are similar, then that means that their corresponding sides are proportional and that their corresponding angles are congruent. What we're trying to figure out in this lesson is if I know that corresponding sides are, the, are proportional and corresponding angles are congruent, can we conclude that they are similar? So in part A, it's asking, are the corresponding angles congruent, yes or no? So we can see that angles N and K are 90 degrees, and we can see that A and D are also 90 degrees, so those angles are congruent. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to pull out a protractor to measure angles B, C, L, and M, but notice with relation to the slope of uh, DC and NM and also BC and LM, that the slopes of those segments, DC and NM, are the same. They're both zero. And the slopes of ML and CB are also the same. They're both negative two. And so if that's true, then angle B is going to be congruent to angle L, and then I can use the same thinking for AB and KL forming angles with LM and BC. So that means angle C and angle M are congruent. So are the corresponding angles congruent? Yes. Are the corresponding ratios of sides equal? And again, I'm not going to pull out a ruler and measure BC and LM. But the other horizontal and vertical segments are easy enough to make. I can just count those spaces. Um, so the length of CD is 2. The length of NM is 4. Length of AD is 3. Length of KN is 6. And so far, I hope that you notice things are looking good. These ratios reduced to the same thing. Um, I said I'm not going to worry about BC and LM, but I am going to look at AB, whose length is 3.5, and KL, which is 7. Are the ratios of the corresponding side lengths equal? Yes. And so are the figures similar? Yes, because we can a dilation of scale factor, whoops, I can't spell today, a dilation of scale factor 2 would map a, B, C, D to K, L, and N. So in this example, I'm asked to consider the graph of A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, H. So are the corresponding angles congruent? Well, that's easy enough to determine. These are both rectangles, and in a rectangle, all angles are right angles. So, yes, they are rectangles. All 90-degree angles. Are the ratios of the corresponding side lengths equal? Well, let's figure that out. AB is 4. EF is 7, BC is 3, FG is 5, and at this point, I have no need to find any other ratios. I can already see these ratios are not the same. So are the, figure, are the figures similar? No. There is no similarity transformation, or better put, A dilation will not map ABCD to 
to EFGH. So if two figures have the same number of sides and the corresponding angles are congruent, does this mean that a pair of corresponding sides are either congruent or proportional? Well, if I have, let's say, a square, badly drawn, but you get the idea, compared to a rectangle, they have the same number of sides, their corresponding angles are congruent, but their corresponding sides are not necessarily congruent or proportional. So, no. For example, consider a square versus a rectangle. If two figures have a center of dilation, is a corresponding pair of sides necessarily proportional? Well, if two figures have a center of dilation, by definition, a dilation took place, so sides would be proportional. If two figures have a corresponding pair, a correspondence of proportional sides, do the figures necessarily have a center of dilation? Not necessarily. Um, for example, if I have a picture and I upload it and my uh, printer prints a enlarged version of it, there was no center of the dilation. They just used the measurements to create the dilation. So, not necessarily. So, two figures that can be mapped to each other by using similarity transformations, um, we've talked about dilations and rigid motions, that makes them similar. And similar figures have the properties listed below. So, just like when we talked about how the order was very important when we're saying that figures are congruent. Same thing here. When we're, when we're making a similarity statement, this is a similarity statement, then we're doing so in a very specific order. We're doing so such that angle A is congruent to F, angle X, first letter equal to first letter, angle B is congruent to Y, second letter congruent to second letter, and so on. Um, with side lengths, however, because these figures are similar and not congruent. We don't say that AB is congruent to XY, but we say that AB and XY are in the same ratio as BC and YZ, and so on. Okay, so in order to show that two figures with all pairs of corresponding sides have equal ratio K, we would use similarity transformations. So we would dilate one figure using K, the scale factor, and the dilated figure is congruent to the second figure by definition of congruence. So if there's a sequence of rigid motions that maps um, that dilated figure to the end product, then the first figure is similar to the last. So in example one, we're identifying some properties of similar figures. So they've told us that EFGH maps to figure RSTU by a similarity transformation. So we know that they're similar. And they're saying write a proportion that contains EF and RU. So EF corresponds to RS, as we see here. And RU corresponds to EH as seen here. And then list any angles that must be congruent to angle G or U. So G is the third letter, must be congruent to T. H is the last letter, so it would have to be congruent to U. So we're doing kind of the same thing in part B with a few blanks to fill in. 
um, write a proportion containing Tx and Lm. So Tx corresponds to Jn, and Lm corresponds to Vw. Angle what is congruent to angle V? That's the third letter. That's going to be L. And then angle what is congruent to angle K? That's second letter, so that has to be angle U. If we know that two figures are similar, what angle or side measurements must we know to find the dilation used in the transformations mapping one figure to another? I hate the way that question is phrased. Bottom line question that they're asking is, what do I need to know in order to find the scale factor? So, to find the scale factor, you need the lengths of a pair of corresponding sides. So in this your turn, we're told that triangles PQR and LMN are similar. So if QR equals 6 and MN is 9, what similarity transformation maps PQR to LMN? So if these figures were in the coordinate plane, what would I have to do to XY so that PQR maps to LMN? Um, remember that scale factor is new over old, and in this figure, the LMN is the new, and so that corresponds to the 9 over 6, and that reduces to 3 halves. So my scale factor is 3 halves. So the coordinate notation for the transformation I would need is 3 halves x, 3 halves y. Now, kind of annoyingly in the book, it calls this problem an error analysis problem, it gives us a statement and says, is the statement true? Well, probably not, since they're calling it an error analysis problem. Let's take a closer look. They're saying that DE is to UV, okay, well, those correspond to each other, as VW corresponds to EF. So, yes, those are all corresponding segments. However, notice that the order in which they refer to these figures is different. They did triangle DEF on top for the first one, and then they did DEF on the bottom for the second ratio. So the statement is not true. They uh, expressed the ratio of sides in two different orders. So now we're using similar figures in order to find some segment and angle uh, variable stuff. In part A, we're trying to find the value of x. Notice where x is. It is the measure of, or it's in an expression with the measure of angle C. So I know that angle C is congruent to angle R, so we set those two things equal to each other, and you notice that they solve for x, x is 17. And then to find the value of y, they set up a proportion, because y is a part of a segment length. And so they did AB is to PS, so 4y over 10, equals uh, AD to PQ, so that's the 3Y minus 5 uh, over 5. And then they multiplied both sides by 10, which might not be the way you would solve that proportion. I know last year most of you probably would have cross-multiplied, and that's fine. You'd end up with the same answer in the end. So let's take a look at part B. 
in part B when I'm finding the value of x. Notice that x is represented in an angle measure. I know that LMN is congruent to XYZ. So that's why we would set 5 times x minus 5 equal to 4x. When we distribute the 5, we've got 5x minus 25 equal to 4x. Uh, subtract the 5x from both sides, and I've got negative 25 equals negative x, so x is 25. When I find the value of y, I'm using that jk is to vw as mn is to yz. And then I'm taking all of that and plugging it into the equation, um, the proportion, excuse me. So jk is 2y minus 8 over vw, which is 4, equals mn, which is 1.5, over the length of yz, which is 1. So as I mentioned in part A, the way some of you learned last year to solve a proportion was to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I'm multiplying these two things across the diagonal. So 1 times 2y minus 8 is 2y minus 8, and that will equal 4 times 1.5 which is 6, and now I have a nice, neat equation to solve. I add 8 to both sides, I get 2y equals 14, and therefore y is 7 when I divide both sides by 2. What are some things you need to be careful about when solving problems involving finding the values of variables and similar figures? First of all, I would say this error analysis that we talked about in number 6. Be consistent. Make sure that you're expressing your ratios in the same order. Also, remember, segments are proportional. Angles are congruent. In this your turn example, now we're solving for x and y again. Notice how x is an angle measure, angle ABE, and how it will be equal to angle C. So 3x plus 14 equals 50. Subtract the 14 from both sides, and we have 3x equals 36. So x is 12. In order to solve for y, I have to set up a proportion. Be very careful. Make sure that you realize y all by itself is not a part of a triangle. Okay, so AE corresponds to AD as BE corresponds to DC. Probably the most common mistake I see students make is do 5.6 over Y equals 4 over 5, and this is wrong. AE is 5.6. AD is 5.6 plus Y. That equals 4 over 5. And that's the proportion that you would want to cross multiply and solve. So in your calculator, you have 5 times 5.6, which is 28. equal to 4 times 5.6 plus y. So 5.6 times 4 is 22.4, and then plus 4y equals 28. Subtract the 22.4 from both sides, 
and I have 5.6 equals 4y. And when I divide both sides by 4, y is 1.4. Okay, so be very careful about not making the mistake here. 